play, these teams played a tie at the Cops Coliseum in Hamilton. Here we go with Gretzky against Lariana. Game one is underway, and Bork fires it off the boards down into the Soviet zone. Batisov back to get it, and as soon as he touches it, it's an icing goal against Team Canada. And the faceoff comes all the way back into the Canadian end of the rink. There's Sergei Svetlov. He has a broken arm, suffered in the first shift of the game the other night, the semifinal game. It's nice of him to stand up and show us his broken arm for us. A fine young player, and uh, in the second intermission, we're going to have Sergei joining Dan Matheson to talk to him. He's just a terrific player. And one of those players I think that we're going to see a great deal of in the future, especially coming up with the Olympics. Claude Lemieux, Kevin Deneen, Rick Tockett are the injured, but Tockett is in the lineup tonight. Svetlov, as we mentioned, along with Kronchuk for the Soviet Union. Face off. Deep in Team Canada zone. We played just six seconds. Larianov against Messier, who won the draw. Bork flipping it out. Makarov knocks it down, and back goes number 11, Mark Messier. To Doug Crossman, number two, ahead to Bork, number seven, feeding it to Mike Gartner, number 12, and that's Batisov coming up to break it up. Now Bork intercepting a pass. Batisov knocks it down for the Soviets to Krutov. Bork back for Canada, and as he tried to clear it, it went off Krutov's stick, and Fjord had to catch it and held it. There are the two semi-kindly coaches, Mike Deenan, or Keenan rather, and of course, Victor Tikhanov, who's been under fire in the Soviet Union. His team is not winning. And when you're under fire by former superstars like Alexander Yakushev and Anatoly Kirsov, I guess it's like being coach of the Montreal Canadiens and having Rocket Richard on your back. Uh, it's a little tough, so he's a little tentative as far as his position is concerned. Here's Canada with Coffey feeding Gretzky. Gretzky dumping it in. Lusarov back to try and clear it. And here's Beckhoff, number 27. Over to Homotop, number 15. He drops it to Stelno. Shot behind the goal. Now Lomakin, number 23. Got it in front, cleared away by Coffey. Sutter trying to get it out of there, held in by Stelno. Centered, and that shot blocked in the slot area by Coffey. Here's Gretzky to Brent Sutter. Canada on the attack, back to Gretzky, pass through the crease, and the Soviets come back, but Coffey with that speed Able to come back and break it up. And then as he cleared it in, it's offside at the Soviet Union blue line. Great play by Coffey coming back. He left the ice during the pregame ceremony. He's got some problems with his skate or his padding. I don't know what it was. Uh, he went back to the dressing room. I'll tell you, it can't be the skates the way he flew on that last shift. He was down in deep, came back and broke up a play, and eventually sent it back into the Soviet zone to cause the offside here. Tempo of the game very high early, Dan. No score. We played a minute and 20 seconds. Here is the Soviet defenseman for Bukin firing it out to center. Now Canada coming back. Here comes Mario Lemieux, shoots one. Wide of the net, Gartner in to chop at the rebound, but couldn't get it in Samak, beating it into center ice for Lomakin, number 23. He's upended by Rochefort, number five. And this is Rochefort carrying to Mario Lemieux. Into Gartner, shoots it. Slapper. And he does that so often for the Washington Capitals, says Gartner. Gartner's second goal of this Canada Cup, 149 the time. And Canada, which has through this tournament started slowly in each game, takes the early lead. That could be a factor. Here's Priyaka now for the Soviets, tied up by Murphy. And it's Patrick trying to get it out for Canada. Could Batisa. Left it in front, blocked by Doug Gilmore, and then Gilmore able to poke it up on the wing, and then he finishes it off by clearing it to center. And Chinov back to his own line. Here are the Soviets now with Himalap shooting it in. Back is Paul Coffey. Quickly out to Patrick on right wing number six. Now back to Murphy. Patrick, by the way, is playing up as a forward tonight because of injuries to 
right wingers like Claude Lemieux and Kevin Deneen. So it's Gretzky out there with Gilmore and Patrick as a forward line. Now here's Priyakin moving it in on left wing. Got nowhere near the net by the Soviets. Canada trying to get it out. Howard Chuck dropping it back for Bork. Here's Bork to Gretzky. Gretzky on the fly as Anderson with him. Gretzky bumped by Kozatonov and knocked off the puck. Gretzky back up. Taken out again by Kozatonov and then upended. And the Soviets come to center. Krutov, number nine. Leaving it for Makarov, number 24. Back on the point. Gusarov check. Canada trying to break away. But Gusarov will get a penalty here for pulling down. Lynn Anderson, it'll be a holding call. Krusarov forced to take a holding penalty as Glenn Anderson was trying to break out of the zone, and he had a bit of a jump on the defenseman. Now he just hauled him down rather than let the, the break occur. Kazatonov is one of the strongest men in this tournament. There is no penalty on this, but watch all of this now. Gretzky goes down earlier, just prior to that, he took a pretty good hit from Kazatonov as well. Not used to getting roughed up like that, but again, he's a hard guy to catch, and that's one of the reasons. Canada with the man advantage. They've had seven power play goals in this tournament and 24 chances. Uh, tournament leading 29% with the man advantage. And Canada with the first man advantage of this game. Here's Makarov trying to work in. Taken out by Bork and Paul Coffey. Has it for Team Canada, giving it to Bork. To Mario Lemieux. Now to Messier with Gretzky. Back to Lemieux. Shoots. Big save, Melnikov, Gretzky after the rebound. But the Soviets are able to clear it out of there. And then Messier pounded Krutov into the boards with a heavy check. Going back is Gretzky to Bork. Bork over for Coffey, now to Lemieux. To Gretzky. Gretzky. Ross to Messier, back to Gretzky, backhander. Just went wide. Pretty, pretty passing. Krutov clears it. Canada with a minute 10. Left in the Soviets' penalty. Coffey into Bork to Lemieux, but it's offside at the Soviets' blue line. Gretzky got a little bit of a jump on the far side. Fans didn't think so. I think they were looking at Lemieux, who take, took the pass. That scoring play was Gartner from Lemieux and Rochefort. 149. Canada with a minute left. In Gusarov's penalty, still with the man advantage. Here is Bork to Messier. Mark Messier speeding in. Leaves it for Gretzky. Trying to drop it to Bork. Bork against Bekoff in the corner and Batisov clears it into center ice. And here come the Soviets. One on one with only Coffey back. Homo top number 15. Side steps Coffey. Beats Bekoff number 27. Mario Lemieux trying to tie him up. Batisov moving in. His shot hit Bork. And Canada's Messier firing it out to Gretzky. Long pass to Lemieux, too far for him. Lemieux racing in against Batisov. Now Lemieux gets it to Gretzky. Gretzky checked by Bekov, and here's Batisov into center ice with Flomakin. Batisov overskated the puck, and that put the play offside of Team Canada's blue line. Ten seconds left in the penalty. Now well, Mario Lemieux right up there at the top of the scoring race in this tournament. As a matter of fact, with the point, he has now tied Gretzky for the tournament lead. His first Canada Cup has been a brilliant one. I think all reviews have been very positive. Eddie Johnson saying the other night that he thought that Mario Lemieux's presence here is helping him just to be around this type of player to recognize what leadership means. <laughs> and he has certainly taken over the role along with Gretzky for Team Canada. Still 10 seconds left in the penalty to Gusarov. Howard Chuck ready on a face-off against number 30, Semyonov of the Soviets. Soviets get it, trying to carry in. Semyonov flipped it in. Now Goulet on the boards, trying to get it out. Well, Mocken is checked, and Goulet breaking out with Anderson and Howard Chuck. Michelle Goulet dumps it in. And the Soviets now back at full strength. Gusarov just out of the penalty box trying to clear it. Here is Anderson for Canada. Round on the boards. Howard Chuck into the corner to Goulet. Goulet back for Howard Chuck. 
Our chuck to Craig Hartsburg at the point. Scoops it to Goulet. And Goulet taken out by Semyonov down in the corner. They do some grinding on the boards. Third over onto the other side. And over to get it is Delnov, who carried to center ice. Now Semyonov. Pass went off a skate. Picked up on the far side by Patota. He shot it in. Now Semyonov digging in to try and center. And Anderson has it for Canada. Glenn Anderson just cleared at the center. Here's Gilmore running into Padota. Gusarov is back after it. Gusarov passing to Priyakin. Headmanning it. In across the line. Humalap shoots one. Another shot. Your stopped them both. Another shot. Rochefort blocked that. And then cleared it out. Batisa into center ice to Humalap to Priyakin. And Gartner back checking broke it up. Gilmore tries to clear it, does. And then Rochefort shoots it down the ice. Here's Gemchina over to Patisov to Priyakin. Picked up now by Humalap, leaving it for Nemchina. Nemchina, number 12, shoots off a stick and high up into the crowd here at the forum. One to nothing. Team Canada leading on an early goal by Mike Gartner. Well, some great plays made by Armand Rochefort early in this game. Here's number eight for the Soviet Union, Yuri Humalev. Plays for the wings of the Soviet, which means he's play, he played for and was coached by and brought up in the game of hockey by Yuri Dmitriev. Take a look at the rush just a couple of moments ago that started all of that problem in front of the net. These guys have got such great speed. He fought his way past the defense. Deflected shot that caused Pure a little bit of a problem. Now, watch the great play by Rochefort as he cleared that out of harm's way. A good start for Rochefort, who made two crunching body checks in his last shift. Also has an assist, and that save in front of the net. It's a nice way to start a hockey game. Canada from the faceoff. Try to clear it, and they do, and it's cleared up over the glass by Doug Crossman. Now, for the Soviets, as you look at Viktor Tikhonov, Problems all have started at goal. There's just no way you replace a Vladislav Tretyev. There may never, ever be a goaltender of his quality in the game. That guy is just kind of filling skates that are about 10 sizes too big for him. Here is Bork for Canada, leading a rush to center ice. Fires it in. Messier and Gartner charge in after it. Here's Messier taking a man out of the play, but the Soviets now drop it back, and Fatisov cleared it right in front of his own net to Krutov. Trying to feed Larry on off, but it was too far. And Bork is back, and Fuhr lifted up on the wing for Crossman. Crossman failed to get it out. Now Bork will carry it up. Here's Bork with a long shot that dipped. Rebound to Anderson, and he fired that one as Anderson went steaming in after it. Here's Makarov, Takasa Tonov, number seven. He flips it in, Crossman back for Canada. Off the boards for Brent Sutter. His pass to Messier. Messier flipping it in for Sutter. Brent Sutter into the corner with Gusarov. And Gusarov does a good job as he took it away from him. Beats Krutov and it comes to center. Larry Murphy for Canada. Played it off the boards. Knocked down by Krutov, back he comes. Trying to go around Murphy. Murphy poked it away. And Gretzky comes up with it. Feeds Michelle Goulet. Leaving it for Gretzky. Gretzky now to Goulet. Now to Lakoff. Had it under his pad but looked in behind him. He didn't know where it was. I don't think that Goulet really saw too much of it either. Some great moves inside the line by Gretzky. And then he slipped it through. Goulet doing what he's supposed to do. Go for the net. Look for it. He came by him and he just got it tip of his stick on it, slid it in there. Well, got a little lucky, but Goulet is getting the redirection. That's enough. They'll get a shot on goal. One to nothing, Canada leading. Here's Gretzky on a faceoff. Backhander that's blocked, and back comes Pomatop, number 15 for the Soviets. Trying to get it to Kaminsky. Gretzky back checking, breaks it up, and here's Gretzky, poppy trailing. So is Goulet, pass to Goulet, just Tipped by Bekov, and the Soviets come back. Pomatov, number 15, firing it in front for Bekov. Murphy tied him up. Now Gusarov, a drive. Pure 
Stick save, bouncing puck, still loose. Centered by the Soviets, a backhander by Bekov. Big save, Fjord, and a penalty coming up here to Canada. And in front of the net, a holding call against Team Canada, and the Soviets will have the man advantage coming up right here and heading to the penalty box is Brent Sutter, number 21. Well, this started when the defenseman, Coffey, got caught up ice, and it caused all the problems when you had Sutter playing defense back there. Sutter's trying to hold the man behind the net, and he finally says, there's only one thing I can do here. Boharski looking right at it. He was tackled, that's literally what he did. But that's the situation you don't like to see is a forward having to play defense. Well, the Soviets will be going to the power play, their first of this game. They're five for 18 with the man advantage, a 28 percentage with the May power play. And here's Doug Gilmore for Team Canada, out killing off the penalty, shooting it down the ice. Kosatonov back to get it. Kosatonov's pass into center ice, picked up on the fly by Samak, flowering it in for Lomakin. He couldn't get it. Now on the board, Semyonov, number 30. Back to Patisa, to Kosatonov. Shoots, he scores! Deflected on the way through. Kosatonov let it go, but it changed directions. This game is tied 1-1. Changed directions, I think, off Gilmore, who was the high man trying to block the shot. Here it comes as it comes to the point. Watch Gilmore move out towards the point. And as the shot comes in, I think it changed direction right there. I don't think the man in front of the net got a piece of it. I think it was the high man. We'll get a better view of it here. Here comes the shot. As Gilmore moves out, there it is. It changed direction, went high. Nothing Fjord could do. Kazatonov will get the goal. Tisov gets an assist. As does Semyonov. Kazatonov getting the goal is first of the series. Here's a breakaway for Priyakin, but Rosbor able to get back and get some help from Krek Hartsburg, and it's cleared up on the boards. Canada working it into center, Lemieux to Gartner, who has had Canada's goal. He fires it in. Gartner on the boards, taken out. Gartner continuing to battle, and it's cleared out of there by the Soviets. Here into center ice is Imalev, number eight to Priyakin. Priyakin dropping it to Lariana. Soviet changing on the fly. Larion off to Kasatonov. Shooting wide by a couple of feet. And Fatisov will have to chase back for it for the Soviets. Fatisov to Makarov. He has Krutov with him. Gives it to Krutov. Back to Makarov. Deflected. Fewer the save. Power Chuck cleared the rebound. Held in by the Soviets. Now center to Makarov. And a good defensive play by Howard Chuck to break that up. Centered. And they fan on it, and here comes Messier. Three on two, Canada break. Messier to Coffey. Fires! And off the blocker of Milnikov. Then into the corner. Soviets trying to work it out. And they do. Larionov, number 11. Feeding it through to Krutop. Saved by Fjord on the short side. Just got his glove on. And Coffey. Passes it out on the wing. Picked up by Anderson to Messier. And Canada dump it in. Gusarov back for the Soviets. Over on uh, to Podokov, held in by Canada. Shot right on. Milnikov the save, and Anderson was knocked down before he could get the rebound. Soviet shoot at the center. Here's Bork to Crossman to Goulet. In to Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky for Canada. Firing it over to Bork. Bork shot. Comes in front. Milnikov out to clear it. And Kamienski breaks down right wing. Only Crossman back. And Crossman makes a good play to break that up. Here is Doug Crossman from the Philadelphia Flyers to Bork. Less than eight minutes to play in the first period. A 1-1 game. Bork to Sutter. But it's offside at the Soviet blue line. With Ron Roos, Dan Kelly at the Forum in Montreal. 1-1 the score. Gartner early for Canada. Kasatonov tied it on a power play at 9.34 here in the first period. Here's Craig Hartsburg backhanding one down the ice. 
Prop going in to get it. Gets some help from Gartner. Now back to Prop. Semyonov took it away from him and tried to feed it into center ice. Hartsburg to Mario Lemieux. In to Prop. Back to Lemieux. He's checked and Samak trying to get it out of there to Semyonov. Back to Samak, number 18. He moves in and is checked before he could make the play. Hartsburg knocking it off the stick. Gossetonov back to get it to Lomakin. Now to Semyonov into Samak, number 18. Hartsburg takes him out nicely. Buck still loose, however. Soviets Lomakin trying to get it in front. Brian Prop intercepts. And now back to the play in the corner. Hartsburg tying up a Soviet player, and he'll get a penalty. Soviet scored earlier on the power play in this game to tie it. Now they have the man advantage again. Messier and Gartner will be the penalty killers up front. Messier will take the face off against Kruta. The green unit, as it's called by the Soviets. Larionov, Makarov, and Krutov up front. Kasatonov and Batisov, the point man. And the puck is cleared by Canada immediately down the ice. This is Batisov. Headmanning it to Larionov, number 11. Bork tied him up, and there's Gartner giving it to Messier. Messier to Gartner. Gartner moves in, big shot, and he blasted that wide of the net. And the Soviets, Larionov to Makarov, number 24. Has Krutov with him. So is Kasatonov catching up with the play. Here's Makarov. Back to Fatisov in front. Larionov couldn't get a stick on the pass. Here's Makarov to Fatisov. Shot, Fjord the save. Rebound, Krutov scores! Krutov! Two power play goals by the Soviets. And the Soviets take a 2-1 lead. Great moves at the goal mouth by Karutov off a rebound. He seemed to be covered, made the move close in, and then tucked it behind Grant Fuhr, who is playing out the top of the crease. The shot by Fatisov, the loose puck, and there it is. He just stick-handled around the goaltender. He had gotten behind Raymond Bork, the defenseman. There he is as Bork moves out. Bork can't get back, and he's got time to tuck it in. Rota for the Soviets. His sixth goal of this Canada Cup. And the Soviets lead 2-1. Both of their goals coming on the power play. Canada has been penalized twice here in this period. And both times, the Soviets have scored. Well, the penalties will kill you. There's Karutov, most valuable player in the Soviet Union last year. Most think now he's probably their best forward. He's gone by Makarov. And the thing they, they like to talk about Krutov, the thing they keep mentioning is not only is he a great offensive player with a great speed, great balance, all of those things, but he's also a terrific defensive player. Great back checker. Plays a total game. Had 50 points in 39 games with the Red Army team last year. Here's Coffee, Canada now trailing. Ahead to Anderson. Anderson in with Howard Chuck and Gretzky. Anderson can't get it back. Now Murphy to Gretzky. Gretzky a shot. Stick save, rebound to Anderson, but he was checked by Priyakin before he could get the shot off. And now Fedotov clearing it into center ice. And the Soviets just shoot it to the Team Canada blue line. Coffey giving it to Gretzky ahead for Howard Chuck. Hopped over his stick. Here's Fedotov, number 14 to Priyakin. And he clears it into center ice with Murphy back for Canada. Murphy to Gretzky, now to Coffey. Trying to get around Fedotov. Look at Coffee fly. Flips it around on the boards. Fomatov there to clear it into center ice. And Patrick, number six, back for Canada. Patrick to Gartner. Chipped down the ice. And as Pervukin goes back to touch it, that's an icing call against Canada. That last scoring play, Krutov is sixth of the Canada Cup. But Tisov and Makarov the assist. 13.53 the time. Soviets with both of their goals in the power play, and they lead it 2-1. to one. Now Canada with Patrick breaking up to Mario Lemieux, but Bekoff was there to break that up, and here's Homotop number 15 to Bekoff, in to Kamienski, to Homotop to Bekoff. Back to Gusarov a drive, and Fuhrer got a stick on that, 
And it deflects up into the crowd. Well, the uh, moral of this period might be stay out of the penalty box run. Well, it's an interesting selection of referee, and uh, the Soviets have taken advantage. Here's Canada trying to work it out. Larry Murphy does flip it up, but shot it too hard. Lemieux trying to keep the play onside. Races in. It is onside. Lemieux trying to center to prop. Got it in front, but Semyon off there to clear it. Now held in by Murphy to prop to Lemieux. Can't get it centered in Kosatonov. Flips it to Petisov. Fired it into center ice. Copy there. And now Petisov down on the ice and injured, I think, in a collision with Mario Lemieux. And Petisov is down on his hands and knees. Well, Petisov's all right, I think, but uh, it was right in front of Don Koharski. And now Petisov's pretty upset at Lemieux. He wanted to go after Lemieux. Mario Lemieux hit it. Here it is here now. He just unloads the puck up the boards. Lemieux had him lined up. And he gave him a good shot. A little elbow in that as well. But the referee was right there. And he didn't see a call for a penalty. A blindsider. And I don't think Petisov liked that one bit. I'm going to watch those two the next shift. 4 3 left in the period. 2-1. Soviet Union, Don Koharski, the referee. Usually in a game such as this, they'd have a, an official from a neutral country, but the Soviets thought a lot of Koharski's work earlier in the series, and they said, let Koharski call it. They had him three times in different games. Said they got a lot of penalties in the games, and according to the coach, they earned every one of them. Here's Goulet in against Perbukin, chipping it into the corner. Goulet and Perbukin battle back of the net. Sutter in after it. Puck comes over onto the other side. And Lomakin now beating Semyonov, number 30. Ahead onto the wing. Samak trying to carry in. Samak dumps it in, and Coffey has it for Canada. Coffey can't get back or get by Lomakin. Semyonov fires it right back in for the Soviets. You're leaving it there, and Murphy has it for Canada. Murphy, number eight, from the Washington Capitals. Fires it in. Goulet comes in, but Gusarov shoots it around. Now Gretzky. Gretzky tied up by Podotov, and here's Semyonov trying to break down with Lomakin. Semyonov still with the puck, dropping it back. And moving in is Stelno, flips it around on the boards. Hartsburg into the other corner. Semyonov all over him. Now Lomakin comes in. We're going to get a penalty here. High sticking, I believe, against Samyanov against Hartsburg in the corner. And it looks as though Team Canada will have the power play now. One of those offensive zone penalties that you hate to have happen against your team. Up against the board, Samyanov in there, and the sticks go up, and the collision right there. And so Canada... Well, get a power play opportunity. The Soviets are two for two in that department. Marski quick with the whistle. No, they don't give it to Semyonov. They give it to Lomakin. So Lomakin gets the penalty. High sticking the call. Canada with a power play and trailing two to one. 2.51 left in the opening period. Canada on its second power play opportunity of this game. They're all for one tonight. Messier, Lemieux, and Gretzky up front. Bork and copy the point men. Here's Bork. To Messier. Leaving it for copy now to Bork. Bork over to Gretzky. Gretzky put it in front. Knocked away by the defenseman Stelnov. And now Makarov cleared it. Lemieux held it in to Messier. Back to Lemieux, but Grutov puts it. Makarov on a breakaway. Makarov scores! 3-1 the Soviet Union. A shorthanded breakaway goal by number 24, Sergei Makarov. Soviets got a man free who had full speed when he picked up the puck. There was no way that the defenseman could handle him. The puck was chipped loose and just flipped out by Karutov to Makarov. That's Ray Bork trying desperately to come back, but he is 
out of it at that point. The good move by Makarov with fewer Oh, I tell you, the mistakes Team Canada has made here have really cost them. Short-handed goal to go with two power play goals. Makarov is sixth of the series. A short-handed goal. Krutop will get an assist. 17.44 the time. 3-1. Soviet Union leading. Here's Crossman to Murphy. Murphy into Howard Chuck, flipping it in. Batisov back to get it. Goulet into Forcheck. Goulet tied up by Glenn Anderson. Now Batisov to Bekov. Good play by Murphy to hold it in. Into the corner. They get it back to Murphy again. Now to Howard Chuck. Over to Crossman. Try to centering pass. Howard Chuck into Anderson. Trying to get it in front. Now Dale Howard Chuck. Back to Murphy. Murphy to Crossman. Shoots off a stick as Patisov went down and got a piece of it. And it deflects up into the crowd. Well, Mike Keenan was talking before the game and he said, just like Czechoslovakia, the Soviets kill penalties very aggressively. And he said, every game, they get a breakaway on us. And they just had one and it scored. Well, the speed is what does it in it there. They, they play that man high, intercepting that cross ice pass at the point. And that's exactly what happened. It was just a great reaction by Karutov to knock it out of midair and chip it up towards center ice. And then, of course, Makarov, one of the fastest men in the world on the hockey rink. Not much chance for Bork to come back. Here is Bork. Canada still in a power play. Bork shooting one. Rebound to Lemieux. Put it across to Gretzky. It was tipped on the way by. Now Gretzky in the corner. Here's Wayne Gretzky. In front to Lemieux. Big save. Milnikov on Lemieux. Slap shot. Oh, Milnikov kicked out that right leg and looked like a thoroughbred there and making that save. Oh, what a labeled shot it was, too, by Mario Lemieux on a great pass from Gretzky, who did a magical job of maintaining I think that wasn't labeled that just was reading the play and reacting quickly there's the great Gretzky pass and a one-timer by Lemieux One fifteen left in the period 24 seconds left in the penalty to Lomakin of the Soviet Union Messier on a face-off against Krutov, who's back out there. Messier getting the draw. Gusarov coming up with it, trying to clear it. Coffee held it in, but Makarov clears it down for the Soviets. This is Bork. Delno stepped into him, and the puck flipped up over the board to Team Canada's bench. We're down to 59 seconds left in the opening period. Raymond Bork, who's been extraordinary in this series he was the one caught but I don't think it was his fault so much one of those things that happens when you're on the power play you're thinking offense the puck is chipped up past you at center ice and a turnover inside the zone shots on goal 11 10 for the Soviets but in the error department every one that Canada has made has wound up in the net here's Makara for the Soviets they're still shorthanded now the penalized player Lomakin back on Krutop with 47 seconds left in the opening period, firing it out into center ice. Three to one, the Soviets lead. Here's Bork shooting it back in. Delno there, now Gartner, back of the net, losing it, and the Soviets, Stelno, number four, carries out. Into center ice, back to Stelno. Weak wrist shot, Pure handling that, and here's Gartner. Getting it out on the boards. Canada just clear it to center. And it's Gusarov for Priyakin. He gets knocked down. And Canada's crossman with eight seconds left in the period. Fires it down the ice. On goal, Milnikov the save. Brent Sutter a shot. Milnikov stopped that. Grutov cleared it. And there's the buzzer to end the first period. Canada took an early lead. On a goal by Gertner, but then power play goals by Kasatonov and Krutop gave the Soviets the lead and to add some icing to the cake, Makarov with a shorthanded goal to make it 3-1 to one for the Soviets. Here we go with the second period, Canada getting it in immediately, but conditioning as this game goes along could be a big factor. Here's Makarov moving in. 
Trying to center. Crossman knocks that away. Rossbor now to Howard Chuck. Asatona pinching in, but Howard Chuck gets it to Messier. Now to Anderson. Batisov cleared that away. And Krutov feeds Batisov. He loses to Howard Chuck. Shoots! Oh, and he shot it just wide. A giveaway by Patisop, but Howard Chuck just missed. Now Rochefort at his own line. To Dale Howard Chuck. Now to Glenn Anderson. Anderson got it to the line, no further. Stelno beating Homatop. Homatop number 15. To Becca. Howard Chuck there to clear it away. And here's Anderson, but Brutop intercepts his pass and drops it back to Gusarov. Into center ice. Here comes Beckhoff, number 27. Quick wrist shot. Stick save, pure. Here's Kamienski, number 13. Round on the boards, Homotov. Now to Kamienski. Frostman checks him. Working it out, and Sutter shot at the center ice. Beckhoff back there. Gets it back into the Canadian zone. Shot up ice. Gretzky charging in after it with Stelnov. And Stelnov comes up with it, number four. Gretzky stays with him, steals it. Gretzky center, Sutter with a poke at it, but Gusarov cleared it, and here's Kamienski. Shoot, he scores! Kamienski from well out, surprising pure. And it's four to one for the Soviet Union. Shades of rendezvous 87, Kamienski, who scored those big goals in the second game of the rendezvous exhibition series. This one, a shocker. Let it go. No reason in the world this should not be stopped, except I think that Fjord may have been a little casual with it in that he didn't play it with his body. He was looking to glove it and it dropped on him. There it is, and I think it did drop on him, and instead of playing the puck uh, to block the puck, he tried to glove it, went right through his leg. Kamienski making it 4-1. Here come the Soviets again. Semyonov getting it in there. Murphy tying him up. Now Lomakis tied up by Murphy. And then it's cleared up on the boards. And now back of the play, a holding penalty called against Team Canada and Larry Murphy. Well, team Canada is going to have to start playing this game like a basketball team that's in foul trouble. They simply cannot get penalties anymore. The last scoring play, Kamienski from Homotop at 210. And Gusarov had an assist as well. That's the goal that made it 4-1. Soviets have a chance here to really put Canada in big trouble if they're not in an up already. Here's Sutter. Fatisov checks him. Now Larianov moving it into Makarov. Makarov for the Soviets. Dropping it to Fatisov. Over to Kasatonov a drive. Pure a save. Larianov flips it on the boards. Sutter over to get it. Makarov knocked it away from him and it comes back to Fatisov. He passed it. Gartner off the bench intercept. He's hauled down. And Makarov will get a penalty. And each team will be a man short now. Makarov, number 24, to the penalty box. Well, the penalties keep coming here. We've had one, two, three, four, six of them called so far. All of the minor penalties. Gartner just hauled down from behind. Well, right? he's 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 off. He's 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 I think Gartner's speed a bit. Hooking is the goal, by the way. 3-10 the time of the penalty. penalty number 24, Sergei Makarov. Two minutes for hooking at three minutes and ten seconds. So each team a man short. Four to one, the Soviet Union leading. Canada with Gretzky out there, along with Lemieux, Coffey, and Bork. This, of course, is a part of the game that Gretzky and the Oilers were so good at. Before they changed the rules a couple of years ago. Let's see how they make out here. Long shot by Bork. Off a stick and up over the glass into the crowd. Well, you look after your sticks exactly the same way in the Soviet Union as you do in Canada. There's Big Fatisov stripping the tape off. Here's Canada from the face off. Gretzky side of the net. Behind the net centered. Coffee moves in, shoots. Milnikov a save. And another penalty coming up to Priyakin in front of the net for Decking Lemieux. And Priyakin will go to the penalty box. And it will be four against three on a power play for Canada. Three penalties called in a minute here. Uh, 
Romero took a shot or a dive. I don't know which there, whatever. It drew the attention of Don Kowarski, the referee, and he called it. The Yakimis, what high sticking will be the call. There's the president of the National Hockey League, John Ziegler, down in the NHL seats, south end of the forum. Canada with a chance here, four against three power play. High sticking against Priyakin, 3.27 the time. Canada in this game, 0 for 2 on the power play. Gretzky, Hoppy, Bork, and Lemieux up. All inside the Soviet line. And Coppy couldn't hold it in. Gretzky has to go back near center ice. Into Lemieux, back to Gretzky, to Mario Lemieux. Lemieux centered it. Bork in front, knocked it down, but Bekov checked him, and Gusarov fires it around and down the ice. This is Paul Coffey. To Gretzky, into Bork. Back to Gretzky. Centered it, tipped away by Stelnov, and Coffey has to chase back. Canada with a four against three power play. Here's Coffey, feeding it to Gretzky. Now to Coffey. Into Lemieux. Drops it back and his back pass misses Gretzky. And Canada has to chase back. Cleared up ice. Here's Coffey. Coffey number 77. Checked by Kuta. Held in. Here's Lemieux. Drops it back. Over to Gretzky. Now to Bork. Now Canada with a two-man advantage. Canada at full strength, Soviets two men short. Here's Messier. This shot wide. Messier into the corner. Checked on the play by Krutov. Big defensive play there by Krutov. Soviets are two men down. And Krutov carried in and the play goes offside at Team Canada's blue line. Two men short still. Makarov will be coming out of the penalty box. 16 seconds, 33 seconds remaining in the penalty to Priyakin. Canada's a little too anxious, I think, Dan. They're overpassing. And trailing 4-1 to one at this point. Soviets cleared down the ice. This is Doug Crossman back to get it. Crossman head manning it into center ice to Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck over to Anderson. Makarov breaks that up. Now the Soviets just one man short. Here's Homatov to Makarov. And he drops it back into his own zone to Patisov. Flipping it down the ice. Homatov to Makarov around Murphy. Makarov cutting in. Backhander and a glove saved by Fuhr. Now the Soviets are back at full strength. Here's Canada with Anderson bumped by Makarov. Now Murphy clearing it up and cleared it up over the boards at the Team Canada bench had everybody ducking there. And he nipped one of his teammates. I think it was Hartsburg. But that Got puck as it blew into the bench. Got him out of the... Uh, came out shaking his hand as if it hit him on the hand as he was coming off the bench. Kazatonov. Some think that he may be playing better defense for the Soviet Union than Patisov is right now. Kazatonov, big, strong guy. Chris Nyland told us today he's as strong a guy as he's ever gone into the boards against. Here's Rochbour for Canada. Teams at full strength. Canada down by three. Trying to battle back here. Rochbour sliding it into the Soviet zone. Cleared out and then carried back in by Tockett, who's on the ice for the first time. And then he gets upended on the play. Tockett's upset at Fedotov, who hit him as he hit the line and dumped him. Talk, it's still talking. Not going to do you much good to talk to the linesman. Rick. Has to see it here as he let it go. Then he was hooked from behind and shoved. Talk it. Bothered by a gimpy knee. Seeing his first action of this game. Now Hartsburg for Canada. Over to Rochefort. Long shot. Milnikov stops that. And the Soviets try and clear it. Held in by Rochefort. Broken up, cleared out. Here is Semyonov breaking down with Kamiensky. Semyonov, a shot. Big save by Fjord as he kicked out his left leg. And Gilmore cleared at the center. Gilmore out there with Prop 
And talk it on the forward line. Soviet shoot it in. Back to get it. And controlling it is Rossford to Gilmore. Gilmore to Prop. Brian Prop with a shot. Milnikoff the save. Didn't know where it was for a moment. And an awful collision in front of the net. One of the Soviet players, Stelnov, running into his goaltender, Milnikoff. Here's Tockett. The goaltender has stopped play, and he cross-checks Stelnov right over top of the goaltender. And so, in the end, Canada is shorthanded again. Here is Canada dumping it into the Soviet Union and to the rink. Gusarov back to pick it up, leaving it for Stelno. Soviets already have two power play goals tonight and lead four to one. Homotov firing it in. That's pure missing it. Bekov back of the net. Gets it in front to Kamienski. Kamienski number 13. Into the side of the goal. Back off a backhander. Pure grabbed that and held onto it. And we get a stoppage and a face off deep in Team Canada's end of the ring. They always seem to find a way, even knocked off balance, to let the quick shot get away. And that one by Beckroff was a real tester on Pure. Still not let one go, just a shift before that. Beckroff, number 27, right in front of the net. He's going to get the pass off to the side. Here it comes, and that quick shot. And Pure right there. They know how to handle almost any puck that comes to him. Backhand, forehand, slap shot, wrist shot. Here's Kasatonov trying to center to Makarov. Now Fatisov held it in, but Messier knocked it down. And a Soviet player, Krutov, is flat on the ice and injured. Didn't see what happened to him, but Krutov is face down on the ice. And that's the reason that play is stopped. Another incident behind the play. You see it there. There's the cross check. What in the world are we degenerating to here now? We're that was Hartsburg. That was just, that was just a cheap shot. Of. If you think you're going to intimidate these guys, or somehow they just don't need to do this kind of thing. Basically, a shot across the back of the neck. That was Krutov. I'm sorry, not uh, Patisov. Take a look at it again. That is unnecessary. No penalty on the play. It was behind the play that that occurred. And Krutov going right to the Soviet locker room. Meanwhile, the Soviets continuing on a power play. Tockett with 122 left in his penalty. And here is Patisov to Makarov. Soviets lead 4-1 and operate with the man advantage. Here's Larionov to Makarov. Makarov trying to cut around Hartsburg. Centered it out in front. Larionov had a shot at it. Now Hartsburg comes up with it. He puts it out on the boards. Messier can't get it by. Now he does get it away from Patisov. One-on-one -on -one against Kasatona. Messier to Rossburg right in. Made. Here's Patisov to Lariana. 38 seconds left in the team Canada penalty. Now Casatona. In for Samak, number 18. Sliding it across to Homotop. Copy there to chip it out and get it by Patisov, who has to chase back. 20 seconds left in Tockett's penalty. Patisov, round on the boards, getting it to. Samak, who cleared it in to Lomakin, but Lomakin went in ahead of the pass offside at the Team Canada Blue Line. Rushmore had that great chance. That's the one play where you hate to see a defenseman on that play, especially a defensive defenseman. He made a pretty good move for a defenseman, but you'd love to see Wayne Gretzky there instead of Norman Rushmore, with all due respect. We're watching for Karutov, who has not come back to the bench after being taken to the dressing room. Here's Perbukin over to Podotov. Soviets controlling and leading this game. Four to one. Samak number 18. 
He drops it back. Lomakis. Well tied up by Goulet. Gretzky comes back. And Wayne Gretzky has it for Canada. Teams at full strength now. Here's Gretzky shooting it in. For Buk and Mack to get it. Canada's Goulet to talk it. Now to Gretzky. Centered out in front. Goulet can't get his shot off. Then when he did, it was wide. Goulet cleared it into the corner. Soviets come up with it and Lomakin feeding it into center ice for Samak. Back to Lomakin. Murphy there to intercept for Canada. Canada trailing 4 to 1 as Murphy headmans it to Paul Coffey. Coffey trying to feed it in front to Tockett. Tockett knocked it into the corner. Now Gretzky knocked away by the Soviets and Lomakin feeds Semyonov. Only one man back, Semyonov. Trying to drop it to Lomack and shoots, he shot it wide. They went to the trailer on the play again, but they shot wide. Here's Gartner right back for Canada. And now Semyonov has it for the Soviets. They head to Kumalap number eight. Rochefort got a piece of him in the corner. Comes to Priyakin, however. He cuts in front. USA puck loose, Hartsburg clearing it away. And then Team Canada, fire to center to Lemieux. Lemieux with Gartner. Lemieux trying to get it. And a good defensive play by Stelno. Now Lemieux again. In front. This time Gusarov there to break it up. Soviets can't get it out. Here's Gartner behind the net. Did center. Kumalap is there to shoot it away. And Hartsburg has to go back. Frank Hartsburg for Canada. Passing one in for prop now to Lemieux. Lemieux trying to get it in front, but Patisov intercepts and clears it out of there. Now Kaminsky to Bekov. Bekov wide open, Homatov hit the post. Homatov in alone hit the post. Canada come back. Here's Lemieux, but that's called back on a two line offside pass after a hit goal post by the Soviets. 11 left in the second period. Four to one. Soviets leading Team Canada. Here's Batisov to number 13, Kamiensky. Leaving it for Homatop. Homatop into Bekov. Now to Kamiensky. Right to center. Howarchuk intercepts. Howarchuk clears it into center ice. Now Bork to Messier to Anderson. His shot partially blocked by Batisov. And Anderson crashed into Milnikov. And Patisov and the rest of the Soviet teammates come to the aid of their goaltender. And Milnikov comes out and has something to say to Glenn Anderson now as they skate back into his goal race. I think Anderson was shoved into the goaltender in this particular instance. The shot was deflected got right on him. And then as he moved in, he's tied up a little bit by, well, now maybe I'm wrong. Huh? Looks like he went after the goaltender. Team Canada bench down right now. They what they desperately need in the next couple of minutes is a goal just to put themselves in kind of a position to come back. A three-goal lead by the Soviets. The way they can play, a tough one to overcome. Let's see what the Gretzky, Tockett, and Goulet line can do. Meanwhile, the Soviets clear it at the center. Here's Krutov into Makarov. Trying to center to Larianov. Copy there to intercept. Paul Coppe, check from behind, Lariana to Makarov. He slides it into the corner, and Goulet has to go back for Canada. Michelle Goulet, number 16, trying to feed Murphy, who lets it go. Pocket picks it up, dumps it in. Nilnikov flips it away for Buchan, trying to shoot it up. Now Goulet getting it into the corner. But Dotop paddling there with... Pocket puck comes to Gretzky in the other corner, centered it, put it right through the crease. And Makarov starts back for the Soviets. Makarov feeding Krutov with Coffey back for Canada. Paul Coffey from the Edmonton Oilers, leading a rush to center. Coffey over to Gretzky. Gretzky moving in, centered it off a skate. Krutov trying to clear it. Gartner held it in. He gets knocked down. And Gusarov fires it out for the Soviets. Murphy held it in. In on the boards, Gilmore checked. Now shot into the corner and 
cleared by the Soviets, and they have a two-on-two -two break to center. Well, Mackin with Kruta, leaving it there. Gilmore to break it up. And number 28, Doug Gilmore for Canada to Mike Gartner. Gartner flips it in. Gilmore charging in. Takes Stelnov out of the play. And now Semyonov has it. Stolen by Gilmore. He lost it, and here's Lomakin for the Soviets. The Semyonov, but Hartsburg cleared it. Here's Lemieux to Gartner, but Masatonov got back to break it up. To Semyonov. Leaving it for Samak, and that shot hit Hartsburg. Lomakin into the corner. Rochefort checks in. Gilmore for Canada. Fires it to center. Batisov intercepting. Now to Semyonov to Samak off his stick. Hartsburg feeds Lemieux. Here's Lemieux to Gartner. Gartner back to Lemieux, and he elected to shoot, and Milnikov stopped it and cleared it himself to center. Brian Prop to Crossman. Now to Bork, back for Prop, intercepted by Semyonov. Soviets leading 4-1. to one. Samak with a long shot. You're handling that, and Crossman has it, giving it to Bork. Canada trailing by three, fire it in. Sutter going in to get it. Get some help on the play from Prop, back for Sutter. He's pinned in there, centered by Canada, but Priyakin for the Soviets, squeezing Kasatona. Kasatona with a drive. Bjorn made a body save, and Bork clears it out to Prop. Now to Sutter, ahead to Gretzky. Gretzky stops, now cuts in front, shoots one. Sutter a whack at it. Gretzky raises the stick as if they score. Now we have an altercation at the side of the net. The holding call coming up, no goal. Here's the business in front of the net as Canada put the pressure on. They've had a couple of good opportunities the last couple of shifts. Good effort by Sutter as he just rolls on that puck. I think eventually wound up in the net. But at that point, they, well, now maybe did, did Gretzky signaling a goal. I didn't see it go in. In any case, through all of that, Sutter drew a penalty, and Podotov goes off on the holding. Canada with the man advantage. Here's Coffey at the point, shooting! That's off the glass. Now Lemieux got it in front. Bekoff clears it, and Homotov flips it to Bekoff, but Bork gets back in a hurry for Canada. Team Canada trailing 4-1 and on a power play. Here's Bork. Dumping it in. Mario Lemieux in to get it. Lemieux tied up. Back to the goal for Gretzky into the corner. Gretzky and Lemieux trying to fish it off the boards. But Homotop is there to shoot it out. And Team Canada has to go back. You're giving it to Bork. Now to Lemieux. Stelnov goes back, but the goaltender will look up in a little stick handling and then decided to freeze it. And that's allowed in international hockey competition. Better part of Valor, I think, in that particular instance. Messier was in there, but also coming in were both Gretzky and Lemieux. And the way those guys could smell out a pass and intercept it. Better just cover it up and hopefully win the face off. Four to one, the Soviet Union leading this one. Mostly on their special team. Something Brad Park mentioned at the beginning of the game. For the Soviets, it's been the key to the game. There's Bekov. Little guy who... Very important part of this team. Canada is 0 for 4 on the power play, and they've given up. A short-handed goal to the Soviets. Here is Anderson. Got it in front. A save, and another penalty coming up for the Soviet Union here. Cross-checking penalty, and the Soviets through top to the penalty box. Canada with a two-man advantage. They're trailing 4-1. 59 seconds left in Fedotov's penalty, and now Krutop in there. Here's Gretzky. Wolves in, shoots. Oh, Messier just failed with a tip and try, and then the Soviets clear it out of there. And now back of the play, we're going to get another penalty. A cross-checking call, this time against Bork of Canada. Well, there goes the two-man advantage that Canada had. I can't believe the kind of hockey Canada is playing here tonight. It is certainly undisciplined. Get a two-man advantage and then mess it up. 
Bork is number seven. There it is. There's the cross check. Cross checking 15:34 the time. Koharski, the referee. Koharski said he'll let the game dictate the way he calls it. He's just calling what he sees. And he's seen quite a bit in this game. He's a three penalties called in less than a minute. So now a four against three power play for Canada. Here's Coffey. Feeding Gretzky. Gretzky shoots wide by a couple of feet. And then Murphy at the point couldn't hold it in and has to chase back. Murphy, number eight for Canada. To Messier. Messier gives it to Coffey. He flips it in. Asatonov back to Pirate, right back out of there. And Team Canada has to retreat. Here's Paul Coffey. Into center ice. Lemieux couldn't handle it, and Gusarov shoots it away for the Soviets. Now the Soviets just... One man short, so each team a man short as one of their penalized players is back on. Here's Crossman, taken out by Gusarov and Semyonov back to get the loose puck. The Stelno, number four, to Semyonov. Let's a shot go off a stick and up into the crowd. Three seventeen remaining in the period. Mario Lemieux. Gave Grusarov a bit of a shot coming out of the zone, and Grusarov kind of doubled over. That was more a, a, it wasn't a dive because he didn't go down, but he sure winced. And Mario right now is in a three-way tie for the tournament scoring lead with Gretzky and Makarov. Rukov right behind now. That's about the way one would expect the scoring race in this tournament would go. The interesting thing is, the guy who's nowhere in sight is Larionov, who has not been very much in evidence in this tournament. He has been playing, they tell us, with a what is variously described as a knee injury or a back injury, depending on which member of the coaching staff you happen to be talking to, but they say he is playing hurt. Larionov is. 51 seconds left in Bork's penalty, 41 seconds left in Krutov's. Each team a man short. Here's Stelno into Semyonov to Lomakin, missed him. Gusarov, number three, to Stelno. Wide of the target with that drive. Now Semyonov on the boards. He's checked and breaking out is Canada. They give it to the delay man, Coffey, who catches up, carries in. And he's checked, and Lomakin comes back for the Soviets. Number 23, Lomakin. Backhander. Fjord got a piece of that with his glove. What a save that was. Back comes Anderson. Into Gartner. Mike Gartner for Canada. Let's the shot go. He's tied up by Stelno, who blocked the shot and now controls it and gives it to Gusarov. And the Soviets come out of their own zone. Demyensky racing in. Fjord out of the net to clear it. Hit Murphy with it. Murphy had to... Slide it aside. Kaminsky knocked it back of the net, and here's Howard Chuck for Canada. To Goulet, now to Howard Chuck. To Murphy with Tocket. Tocket moving in. Shoots one. That's blocked. And cleared into the corner. In there goes Goulet. And he got his stick up, and he'll get a penalty for high sticking. As he and Fedotov had their sticks up, I'm not sure which one of them that. Koharski is sending off. I think it's Padota. It is. Well, that'd be the initial contact that was called. So Koharski right on top of the play. So the high stick. I thought the Goulet got it up a bit too, right at the tag end of the play. This comes with less than two minutes remaining. Chance to see it again. Fedotov, as Goulet goes in, a little bit of a push there, a little bit of a hook, and there's the slash right across the face, and well, that drew the Fedotov penalty. Canada with the man advantage again. Canada 0 for 5 with the power play tonight. And that's something they've been leading the tournament in coming into this game, but the Soviets 
have killed him off well and have scored a shorthanded goal in the bargain. Well, you can't say that it's been lopsided in terms of the penalties. They've been pretty even on each side. Canada's had some opportunities with two-man advantages. There's Larry Onoff, and they're working on, the, on his legs. Now, again, we heard stories that it was a back injury that was bothering him, but we also had heard that one of his knees was giving him trouble. Canada needing a goal badly. They trail four to one. Howard, Chuck, Goulet, and Anderson up front. Murphy and Bork, the point man. Batisov for the Soviets. Slides it right in front of his own net to number 27, Bekov. And he cleared it down, and Murphy has to go back for it. Giving it to Bork. Back to Murphy. Murphy misses Anderson with the pass, but Tisov cleared it. Now Murphy or Bork intercepting. Bork into Anderson, but it's offside at the Soviet blue line. And the Canadians argue about that by the Soviet linesman who whistled that play down, namely Kalinowski. Well, he pointed at Anderson as the man who was offside on the play. He was at the near boards, the play on the other side. So, with 1.30 remaining in the second period, there's Kalinowski. The only Soviet official over here for the tournament, Morozov, who has not got a great many backers here on this side of the Atlantic, was not invited to the tournament. Canada on a power play. Bork feeding into Messier. Messier checked and then Coppy has to backtrack. Gives it to Gretzky. Now to Bork. Into Lemieux. Mario Lemieux on this power play. Back to Bork. Bork into Lemieux. Trying to center. Sliding across and breaking it up was Petisop. Back to Bork again. Return to Lemieux. Behind the net to Messier. That's Kasatonov tying him up. And Kutov clears it out of there. We're in the final minute of the second period. A minute left in Podotov's penalty. Canada trailing 4-1. Here is Lemieux to Gretzky. Gretzky leaving it for Bork. Shot the score! Deflected in and Canada scores on the power play. Tell us what this goal means, but a very important one in the final minute of the period. Barring something further happening, Canada will come into the third period trailing by just two, which is a little more manageable. A deflected shot. The defenseman tried to block it and flipped up over top of Nolnikov's shoulder. And Canada gets on the board after giving up four straight. Bork will get the goal. It hit someone in front of the net, whether it was a Team Canada player or the Soviet defenseman, it was hard to say. A power play goal, and it comes at a badly needed time for Canada, cutting the Soviets' lead to 4-2. to two. Here's Team Canada again, Rochefort firing it in. In comes Brent Sutter. Fired around onto the other side. Over to get it is Gartner, but Imolap checked him. Now Stelno trying to fire it in. Crossman clears it out and Sutter has it for Canada. Now they work it to Crossman. Ten seconds left in the period. Kumalap in there tying up Crossman. Sutter comes back. And they pin it against the boards. It comes loose. And Canada carry up just as the buzzer goes. Glenn Anderson firing a long one. That scoring play for Canada. Bork, Gretzky, and Lemieux, 1918 the time. A power play goal to cut the Soviet lead to four to two. This team Canada, the way it is playing, if it just gets its game back together, I, I can't say that the final result of this game is going to decide the tournament. I think Canada can play a lot better. Gretzky with Goulet and Tuck at the start the third period, and the Soviets immediately clear it down left wing. Here's Krutop to Larionov, cutting in. Larionov and a diving glove save on the short side by Grant Pure. That may have been a game saver right there as Larionov made a couple of nifty moves. We well, said he has been practically invisible in this tournament. Watch this move, though, as he comes blowing by the defense. And then a great move 
but smelling it out beautifully was Fjord reaching back to take it right off his stick. That parlor looks like a guy that's got a bad knee slash back. Great save. That's uh, just the kind of thing they're going to have to get this period because Canada must, of course, open up. Canada trailing by two. Here comes Howard Chuck. He's out with Anderson and Messier. Couldn't get around Kasatonov. Kasatonov flipping it out on the boards. Howard Chuck knocking it down. Kasatonov ties Howard Chuck up. Fires it around to Makarov. Frostman had pinched in to hold it in for Canada. And now Patisov flips it to Krutov. Krutov with Makarov. Two on one break. Krutov shoots. Got wide in the short side. Messier losing it. Krutov had it for the moment. Now Canada. Messier to center ice. Messier trying to slide it through. Does into the corner. Fired in front by Canada, but... Nobody there to get it, and the Soviets shoot it out to center ice. Greg Hartsburg giving it to Glenn Anderson. Canada changing on the fly. Anderson to Bork. Back to Glenn Anderson. Return to Bork. He had trouble with the bouncing puck. Finally clears it. Gusarov going back for the Soviets. That's Gilmore into forecheck. Gilmore stole it, but Lemieux couldn't get it. Now Hartsburg is shot. Here's Gilmore. Chipping it in behind the net. Gardner in front. Gilmore shoots. He scores! Doug Gilmore cuts the Soviet lead to 4-3. To Here it comes. From behind the net, Lemieux chipping it out in front. I think Lemieux got a piece of that. Sliding into the slot. Got away from Beckhoff, who was checking on him. Gilmore, number 28, just flipping it in. Short side. There's a big goal, and it came after Larry Odoff had that break, and then immediately after that, there was a two-on-one on Fjord. Now Canada can sit back a little bit, trailing by a goal and not gamble the way they did in the first minute or so. Gilmore's first goal of this tournament, and it's a big one. It cuts the lead to four to three. Now Canada on the attack again. Bork centered, deflected by Sutter, and over top of the net into the crowd. The Team Canada scoring play, Gilmore from Gartner and Hartsburg, 135 the time to cut the Soviet lead to four to three. In effect, those goals were separated in terms of playing time by two minutes and 17 seconds. This is an intermission between. A late second period and an early third period goal. And the Soviets have seen their lead cut to one. Soviets clear down the ice. Greg Hartsburg back to pick it up. Hartsburg trying to move it out of there. Hartsburg to center into Patrick. Patrick over to prop shot. Milnikoppa saved there. Here's Brian Prop in the corner. Now Padota firing it out of there and down the ice. Fior has to play it so there's no icing. Up to Rochefort. He feeds it to center. And then it's called back. And we're going to get a face-off back in the Team Canada end of the rink. You're seeing Patrick out on the ice right now, a defenseman, but because of... The injuries, he's been on the forward line again here. That play looks like a Gretzky play by a defenseman as he got the puck and immediately slid it to prop. It, you know, the tendency, I think, when you're coming across the line in that position as a defenseman is to wind up and let it go. He made a great play to prop. Prop got the quick shot away. Molnikov was right there. Now here's a Team Canada line of Lemieux at center. Gilmore on left wing, Gartner on right wing. Here's Coffey with the puck. Paul Coffey firing it in. Milnikov steers it away. Gilmore into the corner. Now it's centered, but intercepted in the slot area by Himalev. Over to Priok and trying to move in. Shoots. Bure save on the short side. Puck cleared. Bounced off the boards crazily right into the slot area. And Crossman had to hurry and clear it to center ice. Here's Priok and he's checked. Gilmore to Lemieux. Lemieux moving in. Lemieux trying to make a play. Slides it to Gartner. 
Big slap shot high off the glass. And it bounces all the way back into center ice. Here's Bork for Canada. Flips it in. Batisov back to get it. Gilmore and Gartner crash him into the boards. And back come the Soviets. And Chinov moving in. Wrist shot. Glove save pure. Frostman with the puck for Canada. Canada moving out. Here's Messier to Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck cutting in. Howard Chuck put it in front. Off the skate of Milnikov. Brutop clears it away. And here's Homotop. Over onto the left side. Shot right on. Pure makes the save on Krutov. And then was able to freeze him. And we have some action here now in Montreal, folks. And the crowd is waking up as well. There's Irving Grunman, former uh, general manager of the Montreal Canadiens, watching this one and enjoying it, as are most of the fans who have seen Team Canada come to life. And I'll tell you what brought them to life. Quite a bit of it is putting... Gilmore on the left wing on that line with Lemieux and Gartner. All of a sudden, things livened up. Gilmore got the goal. Gartner and Hartsburg the assists. He's a centerman, but somehow chemistry sometimes is a very funny thing, and he's gone on the left wing on this line, and it's just picked everybody up. Here are the Soviets. Gusarov at the point. A shot that hits the base of the boards and then flipped right up over the glass. And the faceoff is going to be moved outside the blue line. Tikhanov has seen his team go from a three-goal lead to now a one-goal lead. And in utter control of this game until a minute left in the second period when a goal deflected, got by goaltender Milnikov. And suddenly, Team Canada is a different-looking team. Messier, Anderson, and Howard Chuck for Canada. Bork and Crossman on defense, and this is Bork. Canada trailing 4-3. Bork to Crossman to Raymond Bork. Flipping it in. Milnikov lets it go. Messier in to keep it on side on the play. Now Krutov dropping it back. Canada with two men in four checking. Anderson to Messier. He gets tied up. Krutov losing it. Back to Bork. Shoots Milnikov to his knees to stop that. And then look at that action in front of the net. Messier and Gusara. Get their sticks up, and Messier is going to get a penalty. Now over on the other side, Larry Anoff has a hold of one of the Team Canada players. And Canada, with all of that momentum going, now is going to have to kill off a penalty. Spirited action. That's one thing way to describe it. Milnikov's down. Here comes the infamous elbow of Mark Messier. Rusarov paid the price on that one, and then he got away with the initial one, but I think the penalty was called on the, the rest of it. Well, Canada will be shorthanded. Soviets have two power play goals in this game. They lead 4-3. Bekov, Omatov, and Kaminsky up front with this man, Fatisov, along with Kasatonov, the point man. Fatisov giving it to Kasatonov. Now to Bekov, the little center iceman. He gives it to Kamienski. Fires it around in the boards. Kasatonov fired it in behind the net. Rochefort there, trying to clear it. Now home atop to Bekov. Back to Patisov. Shoot it! You're a save! And he wasn't sure where the rebound was. It was underneath him. And Grant Pure just smothered it. Playing his position perfectly. I don't think he saw it, but the old line let the puck hit you in this game. There's all kinds of traffic in front of you. You have to play your position perfectly. There's Batisov leaning into it. With all that traffic in front, Bueller was right there to make the save. A little contact after it as Rushmore came across. And they're running that screen pretty well. Rushmore took care of the traffic. One minute, 32 seconds left in Messier's penalty. Canada from the faceoff with Gilmore breaking out. Gilmore giving it to Sutter. Sutter in across with Gilmore, but Gilmore was in ahead of the play offside. And the faceoff will be at the Soviet blue line. Well, the grinders, there aren't many of them left. The injury list growing, and all of them seem to be to the top, the top corner type players that you need, but there's one who's hanging in there, Brett Sutter. 
Gilmore stays out there as a penalty killer along with Gartner. Rossman and Rochefort will be on defense. 125 left in the Messier penalty. 15.02 left in the third period. Soviets leading four to three. Here's Gilmore against Semyonov. Semyonov gets it to Samak. They move in. Samak centering. Rochefort got a skate on it. Then clears it out of there. Gartner hustling down against Fedota. Gartner ties Fedota up. In comes Gilmore. Gilmore at the side of the net. Doug Gilmore centering it right through the crease. Now Gartner coming up with the puck. Lost it at center ice. Now oh, Rochefort came up and broke it up and then wears it down. Vervukin number five back for the Soviets. To Semyonov, he lets it go and Makarov had it for a moment. He's checked. And then Anderson held it against the boards with the Soviet player Vervukin. And we get a stoppage in play. Well, some very tense moments. This crowd of 14,588 watching, along with the two coaches who are, I guess, looking about the way one would expect they would look. A little tense in a one-goal hockey game in which the coach on the right knows that the team coached by the coach on the left is coming on. Meanwhile, the task at hand killed off the remaining 43 seconds of Mark Messier's penalty. Gartner back out there. Now a power chuck for Canada. Rossmore on defense with Crossman. Larianov, Makarov, and Krutop up front for the Soviets. Here's Howard Chuck flipping one in. Batisov back for the Soviets to Kasatonov, leaving it for Larianov. Headman into Makarov. Makarov. Gartner ties him up. Gartner does a good job. Comes up with the puck and clears it away. 15 seconds left in the penalty. This is Batisov. Firing one up the middle to Makara. Moving in. Gretzky there to tip it away. Held in by the Soviets. Now Messier is back on. Canada can't get it out of there, though. Here are the Soviets with Lariana. Into the corner on the other side. Makara tied up by Murphy. And now here's Gretzky breaking out with Messier. Gretzky. And Krutop without a stick came back to make a big defensive play and break it up. The Tisov now for the Soviets. Trying to clear it across. Kasatona to Humalap, number eight at center ice. Humalap breaking in. Gilmore tied him up. And Canada then clear it, but not out. Ball copy going back. Round on the boards. Humalap into the corner to Nemchinov. Now getting help back of the goal from Priyakin. Big battle back there. Puck still loose, and Murphy comes up with it. Murphy trying to get it off the boards, and Doug Gilmore tipped at the center. Humalep has it there. Into Priyakin to Coffey. Knocked down, and Messier is there. Messier to Gretzky. Gretzky gets up in. Beats Messier. Into Goulet. Goulet cutting in. There's Goulet. Got it in front. Came right through the crease, and now... Out near the blue line, still no, flat on the ice. He was flattened by Messier on his way to the bench. Good collision. When Messier wants a line change, stay out of his <laughs> road, fellas. He really decked him. Now a line of Lemieux, Goulet, and Tockett for Canada. 4-3, the Soviets still leading. Here's Kamiensky trying to clear it up. Now breaking out, it's... Badotop, two on one break, Badotop shoots! Got wide in the short side. Here's Perbukin into the corner. Omalop centered one across. Comes to the point, Badotop's drive, and you're a save. And it's cleared out by Murphy to Goulet, who lets it go as he tipped it down the ice. Badotop back after it, that's Tocket. In to hammer him into the boards. And the Soviets try and fire it back out and do to center ice. Bork, rink wide to Crossman to Tockett, 
into Mario Lemieux. We're booking back Lemieux, steals it. Centered, this is Goulet, here's Murphy. Shoots one, that's blocked. Soviets break out three on two. Here's Beckoff. Had a good play by Bork to break it up, and Canada clear at the center. And, and play is called. Soviets have just picked up a penalty for too many men on the ice. They are not very good at changing on the fly. It's an area of their game that they say they like to work on a little bit. There are a couple of areas they're weak on. One of them is face-offs. The other is this sort of thing. And what happened was Kazatonov came off the bench and immediately touched the puck before the man coming off and heading for the bench had completed the change. So too many men, and the Soviets now will play shorthanded, and that guy is not happy at all. He's going to get his countrymen, the linesmen, to do some... Oh, Aggie. Well, the translators are coming in. We're getting a real... Dmitriev, the assistant coach, Igor Dmitriev, speaks a little English. Uh, he's nodding. He understands it. In any case, Canada, having just killed off a penalty to themselves, are now going to get an opportunity to go on the power play. 11.23 remaining in regulation time. Kamienski heads to the penalty box. Too many men on the ice against the Soviets. Well, Kamienski will serve the penalty. Here it is now. We'll see Kazatonov comes right off the bench right there and takes the puck. Now the other man is just heading for the bench. You see him? And that is the reason for the penalty. You can get on the ice, that's fine, but don't touch the puck until the other guy's off. Canada one for six on the power play in this game. With a chance here with 11.23 to play. Mike Keenan sending over gunners like Messier, Lemieux, and Gretzky up front. Coffey and Bork will be the point man. Bekov and Homatop up front for the Soviets with Kasatonov and Fatisov, as you might guess, back on defense. Canada trailing by a goal and on the power play. Here's Messier to Bork. Bork carrying in to Lemieux. Mario Lemieux hits the side of the net. Lemieux again in front to Gretzky. Fanned on it in the slot. Now Coffey at the point, into Lemieux. Lemieux behind uh, Gretzky. Gretzky centered, Messier scores! No goal! No goal! They really kicked it in. And Koharski disallows it. I don't think there's much doubt about it when you see the replay. Messier's there and he certainly redirected it. Gretzky's saying, well, he was falling away. Shades of the other night when Anderson scored and what would have been the tying game goal, goal against the Czechoslovak team. Now watch it as it comes in front. And the way that big guy in front of him there kind of covered it up for us. But I think more than anything, he directed it in rather than yeah. kicked it in, and that's the same thing, and they disallow it. Game's meant to be played with sticks. Well, Koharski making another tough call in this game. Got a few guys grumbling on the bench and behind it. Still 1.30 left in the Soviet penalty. What a game this has turned out to be. You just don't see hockey any better than this. Faceoff, Messier, Lemieux, and Gretzky up front. Faceoff at the Soviet blue line. Here is Bork scooping it in. Digging in is Paul Coppi. Now to Mario Lemieux. Back of the net to Gretzky. Gretzky in front to Lemieux. He missed it. Bork shoots. Just off the glove of Milnikov and then wide. Coppi to Gretzky. Gretzky in front to Lemieux, but tipped away by the Soviets. And they break out. Makar off with Krutov. Coffey gets back. Krutov moving in at Coffey up into him. And Fuhrer fires it up to Lemieux. Now to Bork to Messier. Into Gretzky. Gretzky to Lemieux. Shoots. Big block there by Podotov, the young defenseman. Back to Coffey at the point. 
Coffee to Lemieux. Lemieux back to Coffee. Shooting glove save. Milnikov. And he held on to it. And then Messier gets knocked in the seat of his pants in front of the net. That was Gusarov who nailed Messier from behind after the whistle had gone. The thing that was important on that whole sequence was the fact that Mulnikov had the lane. He could see the shot coming in from the blue line with no Team Canada players in front. So on the fake shot, comes back to the point. Look at the clear path. Gretzky upset. Broke his stick over the top of the net. They're getting their chances, Team Canada. Again, as the pass back is made by Lemieux, here's the shot by Coffey, and here's the reaction by Gretzky. Still 42 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. Gretzky and Coffey over at the Team Canada bench catching their breath. Keenan would like to leave him out there. And there you see Stelno, who was injured earlier. Here's Messier getting ready on a face-off against Semyonov. 10.05 remaining in the third period. Soviets four, Canada three. Semyonov and Messier. Messier gets the draw. Gretzky a quick shot wide. Now Messier trying to chop it in front and it's caught by Milnikov. And the Soviet goaltender held on to it. Well, there's Gretzky getting a shot away, and I don't know how he did it. it. Looked like he was completely tied up, and he didn't miss the net by much when he let that go. Right off a of face-off. He was the one that was redirecting everybody and changing the face-off alignment. But he seemed to be tied up. Suddenly, there comes the shot. There you see the time remaining. 9.59. 36 seconds left in... The Soviets penalty. Semyonov on Messier. Messier gets the draw to Lemieux. To Coffey. Over to Gretzky. Back to Coffey. Into Lemieux. Put it in front. Milnikov cleared it. But Tisop tried to get it out. Coffey to Lemieux. To Gretzky. Gretzky backhander shot it just wide. Now Bork to Gretzky. Gretzky in the corner, chopped it behind the net. Kasatonov able to clear it out of there. And Coffey goes back to pick it up. Now here's Messier to Coffey. Penalized player back on for the Soviets. Coffey into the corner. Knocked Fatisov down. Now Gretzky coming up with it. Wayne Gretzky out near the blue line, slid it in. Soviets break out. Four on two. Here's Kamiensky to Kasatonov with a shot just wide. Oh, that was a dangerous rush. Now Semyonov for the Soviets. Shoots! You're a glove save on that. And he held on. Pressure's on that young man in this period. He's had to deal with some two-on-ones. This was a four-on-two. And finally, Semyonov let the shot go. And there was Fuhrer with that glove hand of his. Just one of the weapons in his arsenal. 8.59 left in regulation time. Howard Chuck winning a face-off, but Homatop knocks it behind the Canadian goal. Rochefort there. Homatop tied him up. Crossman able to poke it near the line, but held in. Now Crossman again flips it into center ice, and Fedotov gives it to Bekov. Bekov for the Soviets into Homatop. Homatop cross ice to Perbukin. Soviets, Bekov couldn't hold it in, and here's Goulet to Glenn Anderson. Anderson cutting in, trying to center. Knocked into the corner by the Soviets, and cleared. Rossman held it in. His shot to flex wide. Now, back of the net, here's Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck trying to get it in front. Howard Chuck does have it, and then it's cleared by the Soviets down the ice. And Pure comes out of the net to beat Kamiensky to it. Grant Pure giving it to Doug Crossman. Less than eight minutes to play in the third period. Puck cleared in by Canada. They rule that the Soviets could have played it. Fatisov quickly firing it back out, and here's Larianov. Larianov 
Over to Gusarov who carries in. Now centered. Here's Larry on up. Checked by Mario Lemieux. Lemieux breaks up with Doug Gilmore. Lemieux coming in. Trying to get it to Gilmore. He was upended in front of the net. Now behind the goal. Fatisov trying to break it out of there. Gilmore after him. And Fatisov able to flip it to center to Makarov. Makarov to Krutov. Moves in. Big save. Fjord just got a piece of it with a stick. Back comes Gilmore to Coffey. Ball copy for Canada. Over to Gartner. Shoots off the shoulder of Noel Makarov. Makarov back for the Soviets. To Larionov to Makarov. Coffey was there to knock it away. And here's Mike Gartner. Gartner firing it out. Hits Brent Sutter. Sutter clears the prop. Now to Gartner. Gartner cutting in. Never got the shot off. Prop into the corner. Can't get it. And back comes the Soviet player, Priyakin. Priyakin upended on a good play at the blue line by Tockett. And here comes Sutter. Sutter for Canada. Shoots. Milnikov a stick save. Now Sutter behind the net. Can't get it in front. And Priyakin feeds it into center ice. Kumalap couldn't get around Bork. Frostman takes over for Canada. 6-12 to play. Soviets lead 4-3. Rossman stick handling through. Broken up and fired back out by Pervokin. Here's Bork for Canada to talk it. Tipped in and shot back out by the Soviets. Bork hustling back and that will be icing as Ray Bork touches the puck. Overtime is very much a possibility in this game and I don't think with about a minute and a half left in the second period too many fans were thinking that Canada could come back in there. Canada with Messier, Anderson, and Howard Chuck up front. Murphy and Coffey, the point men. Here's Messier, now centered through the crease by Anderson. Coffey shoots! Milnikov juggled it, dropped it, but then dove out to cover up on it. See Anderson and Howard Chuck dive into that goal mouth area looking for anything that might be loose. Let's see how hungry they are right now. Coffey let a great shot go. Again, the Soviets had managed to clear the area in front of the net so the goaltender could see it. But then watch the aftermath of it as both Anderson, Howard Chuck, come barreling in there. Gusarov right with Anderson. Here's Messier against Bekov on the faceoff. Five, 5.46 remaining. 4-3, the Soviets leading. Interesting, the Soviets have... Bekoff out there. Now he's been tossed. Well, there may be an advantage. Omatov steps in to take the draw and wins it and is able to clear it out of there. Kaminsky racing after it, but Coffey knocks it back for Murphy. Murphy into center ice to Anderson. Back to Murphy. Murphy fired it to Coffey. It's tipped in. And Perbukin takes over for the Soviets. Just shooting it back out. Soviets trying to protect the one goal lead. Here's Messier. Into Anderson. Here's Mario Lemieux clipping it in. Gretzky races in. 
Now Crossman at the point. Shoots one. That's high off the glass. Gretzky over to get it. Gretzky centered. Gouley! Shot right on and Milnikov made the save and then throws it. And Goulet just about gave Canada the lead. Look at the play. And look at this chance. Boom! Did Melnikov full marks. Now Messier, Anderson, and Howard Chuck. 4.54 left in regulation time. Here's Anderson trying to get it in front. Now Howard Chuck does get it in front. But Krutop is there for the Soviets and flips it to center. Makarov racing after it. Now Howard Chuck intercepting. Howard Chuck racing in. He's taken out by Batisov. Now Anderson knocking it back of the net. Kasatonov to Batisov. Soviets clear it, and here's Larionov. Three on two, Soviet break. To Krutop, to Makarov, to Larionov centered. Pure diving! Sensational save! Storm back. Howard Chuck fires it in. Patisov is there. And Patisov clearing one. Comes all the way to center. Murphy back to get it. Over to Coffey. Four minutes left in regulation time. Coffey speeding in. Coffey centered. Gilmore in front can't get a shot up. Soviets come back. Two on two break. Shot. And a save by Pure, cleared into the corner, and Gilmore able to feed it into center ice. But no top to Perbukin, shot back in. Doug Gilmore, number 28, feeding Sutter, tipped down the ice. And then fired out by Milnikov, the goaltender, Priyakin, checked by Gilmore, and Podotop has to circle back. Now the Soviets with Perbukin into the... Team Canada zone, a long shot. Pure handles that. Here's Priyakin. Upended by Bork on the play. Here's Bork for Canada. Flips it in. Pocket digging in. Now Bork at the point. Shoots wide. Gretzky the rebound. He scores! Wayne Gretzky for Canada! scoring play. Canada leading 5-4. Remember they trailed at one time. 4-1. Now Kaminsky as the Soviets will go on some offense. Trying to flip it in. Bork is there to clear it out. Goulet loses to Bekov. Bekov stick handling in. Beating it through. Home atop a shot. Muir got a piece of that. Here's Bekov. Gretzky trying to tie him up. Bekov centered. Out of front. They score! And the Soviets come back to tie this game up. A similar goal that Gretzky just scored on a pass out that was just tipped in, and I think it was Homatop without the helmet who got a stick on it. Well, either that or it hit him. There's a big traffic jam in front of the net now. Watch off to the right of the net as we look at it. The puck just came out in front, and it may have hit a Team Canada defenseman who was right in front of the net. That's Bork. 
jammed up in front of the net, and I think it went off his skate. We'll see how they score it, but we've got a 5-5 tie now. Now they announce it as home attack. Home attack from Beckhoff to scoring play. 17-33. It's tied 5-5. 32 seconds apart for the goal. For Gretzky from Bork at 17.01, then Homutov. Hold on to your hat here. Canada dump it in. 2.18. Left in regulation time. Fired out to center. Picked up by Semyonov. He moves in. Backhander. Fjord makes a save on the short side. Didn't know where it was for a moment. Now finds it. And throws it to the linesman. Caught up underneath his blocker. And that presents a key face-off down in the Team Canada zone. With two minutes and seven seconds left in regulation time. Should there be overtime, we will have an intermission. And then 20 minutes. Sudden death. Now they've seen some classics between the Soviets and Canada. And we're seeing one here tonight. This ranks. This one is just incredible. 2.07 to play. Samyanov against Lemieux. Samyanov into the corner, but tied up by Bork, who flips it around. And Crossman breaks out for Canada. Crossman scooping it in. Goulet charging in after it. Takes his man up. Samyanov trying to clear it. Bork held it in. Gets it to Lemieux. Now to Goulet. For Bukin. Center to Lemieux. Shoots. Oh, man, the cop got the left hand out in a flash there. And that's a game saver. Oh, that one was labeled too, but he didn't get the kind of wood he wanted on it. It wasn't a hard shot. A difficult shot to handle, of course, if you're not in position. But Novikov was right there. A great play by Goulet. There's the shot. Gardner waiting for anything that might be left over. He knew where he was shooting it. May have liked to get it a little higher. Face off deep in the Soviets into the rink. Larionov against Messier. Messier tried to whack it in. It's Batisov tied up on the play by Howard Chuck now. To Anderson. Centered in front. Makar off there to pick it off for the Soviets. One and a half minutes left in regulation time. Grutov into Larionov. Shooting. Got it just wide. Crossman flipping it out onto the wing. And it's Anderson shooting it to center ice. Home top cleared it back in. Here's Crossman to Dale Howardchuk. Tipped in. Kasatonov there to feed it to Larionov. Now at center, Makarov misses it. And going back is Paul Coppi. Just fired it to center. We're on the final minute of the third period. Soviets on the attack. Here's Krutov to Pekov and... That shot off Larry Murphy up into the crowd. 52 seconds left in regulation time. Well, as this game has unfolded, we've begun to see some players start to really play well for Team Canada who had not shone in this tournament. Obviously, Doug Gilmore hadn't been given much of a chance. He hadn't played that much, but Larry Murphy's played a pretty good third period here. He's started to come along. As we look behind the... Team Canada bench to the coaches with 52 seconds left in regulation time. Big face off in Canada's end of the rink. Beckhoff will take it against Brent Sutter. And Sutter wins it to Coffey. Around to Murphy, but Coffey picks it up and Gretzky feeds it out of there. Here's Brent Sutter breaking to center. Scoops it in. Provokin back for the Soviets. Shot it back up. Gretzky fires it right back in. Now Provokin trying to clear it. Here's Lemieux to Gretzky behind the net. Gretzky back to Murphy. Murphy centered. Lemieux was there. Couldn't get a stick on it. 25 seconds left in regulation time. Soviets, Bekov breaking up. Bekov moving in. Shoots pure a save. Murphy the rebound. And he cleared it away. Lemieux behind the net with 12 seconds left. To Coffey, held in by Padota. He centered one, but 
Kaminsky had been knocked down in the play, and now Lemieux, with three seconds left, clears up the center, and we are going to have sudden death overtime to decide a winner here. After regulation time, it is Canada 5, the Soviet Union 5. We are ready for sudden death. Messier, Anderson, and Howard Chuck up front for Canada. Against the Larionov, Makarov, Krutov line for the Soviet Union. The Soviets five, Canada five. Game one of a best of three series for the Canada Cup, and we're underway with overtime. Fatisov going back to pick it up. In there, four checking is Anderson. Howard Chuck comes up with it to Messier. Partially fanned on it, and it rolled off to the corner. And here's Krutov to Makarov, but breaking that up was Bork. Shot off the ice. Here's Patisov to Krutov. Bork back. Gives it to Crossman. Quickly out on the boards to Anderson. To Messier. Breaking in with Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck picks it up. Shoots one. Bouncing and blocked at the defense by Casatona. Patisov trying to clear it. And here's Makarov. Being hounded at center ice by Anderson. Makarov back to get it. In the center to Krutov. Back to Casatona. Kasatonov, long shot, stick save, pure. And it deflects up into the crowd here in Montreal. Well, one thing's noticeable, Team Canada is going to keep the shifts short. Well, the Soviets had kept Makarov out on the ice along with his line mates. Canada had headed for the bench and put legs, uh, fresh legs on. And also, it's clear that they're going to try and keep the game down on the Soviet end as long as possible, and they were really hemming them in with a solid and aggressive forechecking style. All the pressure on those two guys, Muir and Dolnikov. That cop wins a face-off. Kaminsky banned on his shot. And here's Gretzky breaking out with Goulet and Murphy. Gretzky centers to Coffey, shooting, and that deflects and trickled in front of the net. Bekov right back for the Soviets. Bekov with a backhander. Muir, a stick save there. Bekov in the corner, couldn't get it, and Gretzky feeds Murphy. Larry Murphy for Canada. Long shot, high off the glass. Soviets trying to clear it out in a hurry. Brent Sutter trying to hold it in. And now it is home atop at center ice to Bekov. Bekov moving in to Kamiensky, just off the end of his stick. Canada with Doug Gilmore, clearing it to Sutter. Nasatonov is there to pick it up. Now to Bekov. He fires it in. Rossbor back for Canada. Rossbor firing it around on the boards. Digging in is Gartner. Gartner behind it up to Mario Lemieux. Center to Gilmore. Gilmore couldn't get the shot off. And then Gilmore gets taken out of the play. Soviets trying to clear it. Held in. Here's Lemieux in the corner. Lemieux centered. And Samak intercepts that. And feeds it to Lomakin. Lomakin against Rashbor, who takes him out of the play. And Rashbor over to get the loose puck. Trying to scoop it out of there, and he flipped it on his backhand. Over the glass and into the crowd. Well, the shifts are 30 seconds long for Team Canada. That line was out there for the Soviet Union for the whole shift. Canada had two line changes during that shift. So they are definitely trying to keep fresh legs on the ice, try and take advantage of perhaps a tired ship for the Soviet Union. Gilmore got a pass from behind the net here. This is Mario Lemieux, always in on it. The puck deflected off a skate, wound up right at the side of the net, but then he just simply couldn't corral it, tee it up, and get a shot away at that point. Milnikoff had come over to cover the corner. Messier winning a face-off around to Howard Chuck. That's Priyakin pinching in to hold it in, but Canada clear it. And Fedotov goes back to pick it up. Number 14, Fedota, held in by Howard Chuck. Now Canada with Anderson. Fedota trying to clear it. Crossman tried to hold it in, but it's cleared by the Soviets. And Messier is back for Canada. Two Bork trying to clear it to Anderson. That's Nemchinov intercepting. Comes back to Canada's blue line with Bork controlling. Raymond Bork ahead for Howard Chuck. Batisov. Back for the Soviet Union. Flipping one. Here's Nemchinov. Got up the center. Crossman knocks it down. 
Tipped it in for Anderson. Canada change again on the fly. And now the Soviets follow suit. Here's Makara trying to shoot it in. Copy back for Canada. Copy. Flipping it into center ice. Intercepting it there. Gusarov to Larianov. Now into Makara. In behind Copy. Makara shoots. Big save. Pure rebound. Larianov is stopped by Copy. And that's the best chance yet for either team. First it was Fuhr and then Coffey with big blocks. Canada holding it in. Gusarov is there. Now Goulet for Canada. Larianov breaks up with Fruta. Larianov moving in. Shoots one. Oh, Fjord just got a piece of that and then it ricocheted up. Here comes Gretzky for Canada. Gretzky circling to get away from Homata. Gretzky flipping it in. That's Gusarov back to get it. He's not flying. And Bekov, number 27, comes to center. Bekov trying to flip it through. Rosbor there to knock it away. And then Brent Sutter shoots it up. Pass it to Nop. Beating one up to Homatop. Into Bekov. That shot blocked. And Rosbor for Canada clears to center ice. Pass it to Nop. Lost it to Doug Gilmore. Gilmore for Canada. Passing to Gartner. Gartner back to Gilmore. Gilmore cutting in. Number 28, Gilmore centered it. Off the skate of Fedota. And then Gartner ran into the Soviet goal and knocked it loose and we get a stop it. Well, that Gilmore has been an act unto himself. And the, from the point where they put him on the left wing on that line, he is, in my mind, the number one Team Canada player because things seem to happen with him. Now, Grant Fuhr... After a mistake by Coffey in the center ice zone, Grant Fuhr had to make one save, deal with Perutov right in front of the net off the Makarov save, and now here comes the other line mate, as it was the guy who made the mistake that started that sequence who got back in and blocked the Larionov shot, and then he got another one. And this one, he seemed to try to snap it out of midair, and it went off his glove. It seemed to drop on him a little bit, but fortunately it went off the right part of his glove and upwards rather than downwards. Sudden death overtime. Canada and the Soviets. Here is Lomakin after a loose puck. Bork is there to clear it away. Dale Howard Chuck couldn't get it, and here's Batisov. Batisov to Lomakin, misses him, and Crossman goes back for Canada. Passing it ahead for Anderson. Anderson stick handling in. Anderson shot into the corner to Howard Chuck. Tried to get it in front. Knocked away and Patisov has it for the Soviets. Patisov into center ice. To Lomakin. Samyanov to Samak. He scores! Samak into the top corner. And the Soviets win in overtime. Six to five. Alexander Samak with the winning goal. What a great shot by Samak. Picking the top corner on the glove side, but a great play coming out to strength of Patisov, and then he looked one way, gave the pass the other. Now Samak will get the pass over the line. They just Maybe slip it through, and here's the shot. Right off the crossbar and in to end what has been just a classic hockey game. Samak, who's normally a center, moved to right wing because of the injury to Swetlov, and he proves to be the hero of the night for the Soviets. Semyonov with that play in his skates as he seemed to corral the puck beautifully and then give it to Samak. Boy, what a shot, though. You Just nothing that Fjord could do at all. Hate to see a team lose. The Soviets have won this one, but this series is far from being over. Team Canada plays a full 60 minutes like they played the final 30 minutes of regulation time in the first five minutes of this, and they can beat the Soviets on most nights.